Icelandic scientists warn activities increase in the volcano that has spewed plumes of ash into the air since Wednesday. Lingering clouds of grit have canceled thousands of flights across Europe. And NBC News' Chris Chansing is in Hyasvolar, Iceland. Hi there, Alex. And there's actually been a change here in Iceland since you and I both talked. As you know, those scientists were hoping to go up in a plane and get a look down into the crater of the volcano to have a sense of how long the eruptions might continue and, as a result of that, how long the travel disruptions might go on. But take a look at the size of that volcanic plume and just how thick it is, how concentrated it is, the gray areas where that ash and particulate matter are particularly dense. So we just heard from the Icelandic Coast Guard they're not going to be able to do the flyover and see what they had hoped to see. What they were looking for was just how much of that ice cap, how much of that glacier had melted because when that water mixes with the magma, uh, which is of course lava that is still inside the crater, it causes this ash to spew. So the more there is, obviously, the longer the eruption, the longer the, the plane problems will continue. Right now, as you know, most of the flights have been canceled over the next couple of days. Some of the volcanologists that we've talked to at the University of Iceland are saying it could go on for far beyond that, perhaps as long as 10 days. But this is obviously uh, a very changeable situation that they're going to continue to try to assess. But as far as today and getting up in that plane, they aren't going to be able to do it. We're we're going to try to get in the air uh, and actually take a helicopter up and get a view at least around and, and get a sense, bird's eye view, of the density of that plume. And if we're able to actually fly later today, we'll be able to show it to folks on a NBC Nightly News on their local station tonight. We'll have it for you tomorrow on MSNBC. Alex? All right. Well, safe travels with that. We'll look for that. Thank you so much, Chris Jansing. So what kind of impact will all this have on the environment? Joining me live now, Reese Halter, conservation biologist and adjunct professor at Cal Lutheran University. Good morning to you. Good morning, Alex, from California. Well, that's my home state. It's good to talk to someone out there. But, Risa, I'm curious about the impact overall that this eruption and volcanic ash could have on the environment. Is this long-term? Can it be dissipated with the wind and then just diffuse out in the atmosphere? Or are there some concerns? Well, it, it, it all depends, Alex, but right now, I mean, what we're seeing, that plume is wicked, and that's glass-like particles. Uh, when the sizzling lava comes in contact with that uh, ice-cold glacier, you get this glass-like material. Imagine if you took uh, a, a boiling glass out of a furnace and dropped it in a bucket of ice water. Hmm. It would shatter into a billion pieces, so it's, that's going up into the atmosphere right now. Okay. Okay, yeah, that's a, a great picture you paint for us right there. But there's been a lot of discussion, Reese, that this volcanic ash situation could, in fact, slow down global warmings, uh, global warming, rather. Is there, from a fact-checking perspective, is that true? It, it could. I mean, look, uh, a Mount Pinatubo in the Philippines some years back, uh, which was at least 10, maybe 15 times greater than what we're seeing right hmm. now, uh, did lower uh, the Earth's temperature by about a half a degree for a couple of years. But right now, no. Uh, you know, we're, the, the real issue actually is we're coming off the, the hottest March ever recorded since 1880. And actually, what we're looking at is uh, the Arctic and sea ice because March is the big month for the accumulation of ice. At 5.8 million square miles, that was the fifth lowest uh, sea ice in 31 years. So, mm -hmm. you know, old Earth, is, she's still warming. Yeah. You know, you mentioned Mount Pinatubo, Reese, and you talk about that being really exponentially stronger. Why is it that, that we didn't have the same ramifications from that uh, volcanic eruption as, as we're seeing with this? I mean, the global disruption here is huge. Absolutely. Well, I, I think what we're seeing is the proximity of Iceland to 600 million people, uh, which is Western Europe. And, and, and it, we're in a global village now. I mean, every day, thousands of airplanes are flying millions of people and tons of cargo. And uh, right now, we're, we're seeing a major disruption. And, you know, it's a, it's a big planet, but it's a small world. Yeah, true. Hey, Reese, do you worry about long-term health problems as a result of this? 
Could be. I mean, you, good point. The respiratory or, or lung action in, in Western Europe right now is not good. And also, you know, there's, there's the uh, fallout of maybe acid rain. You've got carbon dioxide, you've got sulfur dioxide, and you've got hydrogen uh, uh, fluorine. And when it rains, it, 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 that's what we call acid rain. So, yeah, we're watching it. And also, if this plume continues, it's going to thin out. Uh, the the ozone layer, Alex. So oh. you, there's lots of worries. Yeah, this is probably a long-term story we'll be discussing uh, many times. But good to talk about it with you, Reese Halter. Thank you very much from Cal Lutheran University. I love that you use the word thank wicked. You. That is such a SoCal yeah, thing to do. And, and ha happy yeah. happy Earth Day and and uh, coming up uh, to the Green Apple. All right, thanks so much. Still ahead, a report from London's Heathrow Airport on how travelers are coping.